Hello everybody and welcome back to another JavaScript tutorial. So in this video we're going to be talking about maps. Now maps are kind of a mixture of sets and arrays. Now it's not really the best way to describe them but you'll understand them as we get through. But they have the same property as a set where we can actually look up items and see if items exist in what's called constant time. Now in case I didn't make this clear enough in the last video, adding items and deleting items from a set also happens in constant time. Now I just want to say this because it's the same as maps. When you have an array, right, and we have an array and we look something like this and we want to add an element say to the beginning of this array. Well this actually takes what's called O n time and I don't want to get into space time complexity with you guys but essentially the more elements you have in an array the longer it takes to potentially delete one or add one and especially to find if one exists. The only real benefit of an array for us is the fact that we can keep track of the order in which elements exist and we can access them directly by using the, that index right array 0, array 1, array 2, whatever right that's kind of the advantage and the reason we use an array and for most problems that's fine. But there's a lot of instances in which we actually want a faster kind of structure that will allow us to add, delete, and look up items in constant time, but we can't necessarily access them with indexes and know the order in which they were um, inserted, right? And we also can't keep track of the frequency, whereas in an array, obviously, we can have the same element more than once. Okay, so that's my little spiel here. Now what I'm going to do is start talking about maps. So let's create a map. We'll just call this mp equals new map. Now, what is a map? Well, a map is similar to a set, but what it holds is what are called key value pairs. Now, this is kind of what I mean. We have a key. Maybe this key is something like high in this maps to some value. Maybe in this instance, we say six. So we have some arbitrary key can be called whatever we want mapping to some value. Now, this is very useful for a lot of different tasks. I'm going to show a good example in a second of how we actually use this. But the whole point of this is that this key value is what we use to access different um, or this key. Yeah, this key is what we use to access different values. And obviously we have, you know, more than one key. So I'd have another key like this. I could have maybe the key Apple and that corresponds to the value seven. And obviously our keys can be different too. We could have a key that's actually numeric, which is eight. And that could map to maybe the string Tim, right? So this is the way that a a map works. We have a key that maps to some value and you'll see why this is useful in just a second. And again, same properties here to look up any key is going to be instant time. So you can think of it as instantaneous versus an array that's much slower. And to grab that value is going to be the same. So to add, delete or look up is going to happen very quickly. That's why we use a map. So let's start talking about some map operations. I'm going to first talk about the constructor. So right now what I've done is created what's called an empty map, although I can actually add some values in this constructor to start off with some kind of initialized values. So to do this, what you actually need to do if you want to start, start with some keys in here is create an array of arrays of keys and values. Now I know this seems strange. So actually let's separate this um, like this so you, everyone can get a better idea of how this looks. Okay and like that. Okay. So what I'm done is I've had this initial array and then I have two arrays inside of here. And what I'm going to do in these arrays is put a key and then a value. So my first key, I'm just going to say is T and this will point to, let's say the value five, and then let's have a key V and maybe this points to the value eight. So we've started off our map with these different key values. Let me just put this up here because that's going to be annoying. Okay. So now how do we access these keys? How do we create new keys? How do we do all this? Well, to get a key, what we use is called get. Now I'm just going to console.log this so we can see. So I'm going to console.log MP, which is obviously standing for map. And what I do in here is I put the key that I want to access. Now what this is going to do is return to me the value associated with the key. So if I put, for example, T here, and we go and we refresh this, you can see that we get the value five printed out because this method returned to us five. Now, if I put V and I refresh this here, we get eight and hopefully you're understanding and getting the point. That is how this works. Now let's show how we can actually add things to our map. So to add something to our map, what we do is MP dot set and we simply put in here a key and a value. So I'm actually going to do this a little bit weird just to kind of confuse you guys a bit. I'm going to actually set the key T to the value nine. Now, what do you think this does? Remember, maps are very similar to sets. Do we think this adds another key called T that has the value nine? 
or does it override the existing key and change that value? Well, let's see here if we try to get the value of T. Let's see what value we're actually going to get. Well, we're going to get nine. That is because if you set a key that already exists, essentially what you do is just completely override this and change the value to whatever it is you put here. Now, obviously, I can add some other ones. So I can mp.set, you know, like h. I honestly, let's actually just set like three equal to hello. Now you see if we get the key three from our map, we get the value hello. And let's try to get a key that doesn't exist from our map and see what we're getting there. Do a refresh, undefined. Obviously, there's nothing in the map that's going to give us that value. So those are the two basic operations for maps. We have set and we have get. Now, obviously, we can look at the size of our map, just like almost everything in JavaScript. So if we do this, we get we have three keys. So three key value pairs in our map because we've added this three. Hello. And that is the basic principle. Now to delete keys is very easy as well. We're just going to do MP dot delete. We could delete the value or the key T and we should see that our size changes from two to one. So let's have a look at that. And now we get the value one because we deleted T. What happens if we try to delete a key that doesn't exist? For example, the string six. Well, we still have a size of two and there's no errors. That's fine. We just didn't end up deleting that key. All right. So the next one that I want to talk about is has now has simply is a Boolean value that tells us if the map has a specific key. So very similar to set and this runs in the same kind of time as it does for a set. So I say MP dot has and I put the value T like this and we print out our answer. Obviously, that is true. And then if we do something like, you know, six here, so let's refresh this, then we get the value false because obviously the key six or the string six was not one of the keys in our map. And yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it for maps. I'll show you a few other methods. We have the map.clear method. So I could say mp.clear. Let's just actually print out mp so we can have a look at it after. mp.clear is obviously just going to remove all of the keys. So we see we have an empty map here. We've cleared all of the entries from it. What else we have is the map entries method. So this one is actually interesting. I'll show you this uh, entries like that. So let's refresh and you can see we get T points to five V points to eight. And this is what's called an iterator, which means we can loop through this uh, and look at all the different entries. So let's actually do that. Now we'll do a for loop and just show how we can iterate through this. So we'll say for var entry of MP. All we need to do is simply console.log the entry. Now the question is, what is entry? Is entry going to be the key? Is it going to be the value or is it going to be the whole thing? Let's find out by refreshing. And we can see that's actually giving us the whole thing. So if I want to access just the key or just the value, what I have to do is actually index either zero or one. If I index zero, that's going to give me the key. If I index one, that's going to give me the value. And the reason for this is because again, we're actually looping through this array, right? So we, you know, we go through the map and then we are given for entry an array. So we have to loop through the value to determine which one we actually want. I don't, did not mean to do that. Let's refresh. Now you see, we're just printing out the keys. And if we were to change this to one, then we would just be printing out the values like that pretty straightforward. Okay, so now let's go through an example with why we'd actually want to use a map. And this one is a fairly um, good example. Actually, I like this example to count the number of characters in a string. So let's just say str equals and then let's do uh, this is my new string. Uh, hello, just add some characters in here. So what I want to do is actually create a count of all of these characters, I want some way to be able to find out how many of any letter exist in this string. So if I want to find how many T's, I want a way to do that. How many I's, M, N, so forth. You know, I want a way to do that. I want to count all of the different letters. Well, we can do this very easily using a map. And I'm going to show you just by going through the example and then we'll walk through it step by step. I'm going to say var uh, letter of string, which means we're just going to loop through each letter in our string. And what I'm going to do now is say if in this case, uh, we'll actually need these MP dot has letter. So if it does have the letter, what I'm going to do is actually say MP dot set. And in this case, the key is going to be the letter and the value is going to be MP dot get letter plus one. Now what I'm going to do is store in my map key values that look something like this. I'm going to store the letter, for example, let's say T and I'm going to store the count as the value. So I'm going to store how many times I've seen uh, 
you know, whatever this is. So if we actually have the letter already inside of our map, that means we've seen it before. And we'll talk about how we're going to do that in a second. We'll grab whatever the current value of it is here, and then we'll add one to it and store that back in the map. And remember when we set, you know, a specific key, if that key already exists in the map, which it will have here, say we have T, we just override that and we'll just change T's value to be three. And that's the point. We're going to just increment and count how many letters. And I'll show you how we can look at them in a second. Now, otherwise, so if the map doesn't have this letter, we need to add that letter to the map. So we're going to say MP dot set letter one. The reason we can just put one is because if this is the first time that we've seen this letter, it's not already in the map. All we need to do is give it an initial value of one because we've seen this letter one time. OK, so that is how we do that. Now, let's just print out the map to have a look at it after. So if we refresh, we go here, we can see that we have now our map T has a count of two H has two I three S three blank, which is space actually has a value of five. And then we can keep going and see all of the different letters as well as their counts. So this is useful because now if I want to check how many, you know, say T's are in my map, what I can do is say, okay, let's get the value of T. Let's see how many T's are were in this string that we counted, right? So if we refresh, now we print out two and now any letter I want, I simply put inside here. And obviously if we don't have the letter in there, it's going to give us, you know, just an undefined value, but you kind of get the point on that. So anyways, this has kind of been it on maps. I hope this example helped illustrate when you might actually use a map. I know this seems kind of complicated, but it's really not that far. You know, you just have to kind of understand what these methods do and how you actually use them properly. So anyways, that has been it for maps. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel. And as always, let me know what you want to see from the rest of this JavaScript tutorial series.